Weber, looking at uh, a 2016, 2017 World Seven Series, a challenging one. Of course, the first one, as you said, Mastanava, uh, Vawanimbuka, taking uh, the team to the first two tournaments, you joining in 2017. Uh, what were some of the challenges, lessons learned from that uh, World Seven Series? I think, obviously, the probably outcome of it all was was our lack of consistency. Um, you know, we played some great stuff in that. You know, we we won Hong Kong in that year, which probably saved my job in many respects. Um, I know I was under pressure at that point. Um, and, you know, in, in going through that year, and I, I very much saw it as a transition year. I know that, you know, people still believe that because we'd won the Olympics the year previously, that everything should run the same way. But the reality was, and it's a big, it's a big part of sport, especially in team sport. It was obvious to me that we had players, um, numerous different players that um, were at different points in their careers and, and different points in mapping out and understanding what was going to be in the future. And again, I was, my thoughts were always about the Olympics in 2020, be it 21. Um, and as I looked at those players, which ones were going to be with us? Which ones are going to carry us through? Yes, you'll you'll gain some, you'll lose some. But there was a core group of players that you that I was looking to develop all the time. And within that, you had you know all you know he did a great job. The likes of Osea, you know Osea had probably some of the toughest years of his life coming up to that 2016 win, the World Series, the scrutiny he got, the pressure that he was under. Um, you know, he didn't shirk from his response. He's a great captain with me as well. And I'm very fond of him. I'm very, very appreciative of what he did for that group of players to move them on. But it was also clear to me at that stage that us was at some point going to be looking overseas and had had offer two opportunities. So then you start sort of playing in your own head about, OK, how are you going to groom the next captain, for example? And then in amongst all that, you had players who were you know, exceptional in their talent, but motivation had dropped off them. And where were they going to be? I mean, you know, Sammy Vili Vili is one of the best, best, certainly the best defensive players I've I've coached, and certainly as a sevens player. But it's clear to me again that Sammy wasn't where he needed to be. And the thought process for Sammy of another four years was was a big ask. Um, and then you had other players who were leaving and going overseas. And I, I told this story recently, but I remember, you know, you know, obviously my communication with the players I was trying to get that, and I rely heavily on the staff, certainly in the early years. And I remember we were going to, and I think it was London. I, I probably misremember. I'm getting too old now. But um, I remember uh, p- picking the squad and about three days before we travelled, Masavesi Dakawanga coming to me and asking for time off to go and get his visa. And I said, you don't need to. We've done all the visas. And he said, no, no, no. I, I've, I've got to go to France. Sorry, I've got to go to Australia. My fault. I've got to go to Australia. And I said, why are you going to Australia? He said, well, I've got a contract I got a contract to go and play rugby league. I said, well, we've picked you to go to, to London. Yeah, but I'm, I've, I've just got this contract. And we were literally warming up on the field to go and do the th- three days before we travel. And, and you know, it was issues like that. Massey didn't mean anything by it. He, he, he knew that there was an opportunity and that was what we had encouraged and had been encouraged. Um, but it was just t- it was things like that that knock out your consistency. And in amongst all that, you're still trying to develop young young players to have uh, the understanding of international rugby, the understanding of the commitment that they're going to need to make, not just this week or next week, but for the next four years, if they want to be in this squad. And that's what you're looking for all the time. And then, you know, how you piece the game together. And I think that, you know, that was probably, yeah, it was sort of 12, 18 months before we get started getting towards a settled group of players with an understanding of who the leadership group were, you know, the likes of Cali came into that, Paolo Janison Akula, Jerry himself. We started molding the group, molding the culture. And I know from the outside, it is about winning at all costs. It's about what happens on the field. If you don't win, you're gone. But I'm, you know, <clears throat> I'm, you know, I've done this for a while now and I've been as a player as well. I mean, the building of that capability off the field is huge in giving you that understanding of how you do it on the field. There is no substitute for experience. <clears throat> there isn't. I mean, you can you can get a young group of players together and, and, and they can have super talent, um, but they need to have the conditioning experience of being able to play and train at that level. And that, to me, is one of the biggest challenges we have in Fiji. 
Um, because players don't have the models within other sports or within rugby itself, they haven't been in junior programs where they started to understand how they're supposed to behave, what they're supposed to eat, what they're supposed to um, look after themselves with. The first time they get that is when they walk through the door with us in, in the sevens environment, if they haven't now been in the academy program at the FIU. And, and that's what an academy program does. It basically builds the capability of these players to jump into an elite program and go, right, I've got the talent. I know what the behaviours are. Now I've just got to get my head right in terms of playing for this group. And as I said, that was that first year was a lot about developing through the coaches and the management, the understanding of what that culture looked like and then exposing the players to it and not at that stage being afraid of making mistakes. And the making the mistakes did get us and we did lose tournaments and I knew I was under pressure. But I also knew that if I needed to get to where I needed to, I had to go through a process. Um, and then I think in the sort of second and third years, then you saw that coming out. So, um, yeah, those, that would be sort of that first year about, you know, building that team, building that capability and the processes you put together and then building the culture necessary to, to you know, keep the players where they needed to be to be able to perform at the levels that they have. 